So I travel back in time to a brand new Genshin account with the ultimate goal of saving 100,000 free to play Primo Gems. Today marks 100 days since I created this account, and oh boy, the journey was really difficult. To start off, I made some rules with this account. I could not spend any Primo Gems because this will make my end goal even harder to achieve. So I'll be saving all my hard earned Primo Gems until I get 100,000. Both acquainted and intertwined fates do not count as Primo Gems. So for example, if I have 10 intertwined fates, they wouldn't count as 1600 Primo Gems. So I'll have to gather 100,000 shiny raw primo gems to clear this account. I know a lot of you will probably ask this as well. Can you wish with the fate to gather? Well, yes and no. I'll be wishing on a beginner's banner once and hoard the rest of the fates to wish so I can get a C6 5 star character. This means I will most likely use characters that we get for free through events and starter 4 star characters. For Sander fates, I'll also hoard them to make this challenge harder. So with the first week on this account, I went through what every newbie did starting out. The Mondstadt Prologue. First, we met Amber, and for those of you that are unfamiliar with my Road to 100k series, no Paimon Slander are allowed. So naturally, I picked the most superior option, saying Paimon and I are friends. If you agree, comment Paimon is friend, not food, and I will heart every comment that says that. Next, we went through all the tutorial domains and got Lisa and Kaya to join the party, and we fought the EXP ley lines for books to raise our characters to level 20. After that, we continued the Mondstadt Archon quest and broke into the church to steal the Holy Liar. But the Fatuis got ahead of us and swiped it away from us. I took great offense to that so we broke into the Fatui hideout alongside Diluc and stole a liar back. We went back to Devalin's protection squad and went through a dramatic cutscene and the next thing we knew we were locked out of the Archon quest until AR18. So to raise our adventure rank, we completed Amber's gliding quest and obtained our gliding license and got around 1079 primo gems after the first week. Continuing on to day 8, we got enough EXP to get ourselves to AR18 after doing the daily commissions, so we could finally continue the last part of the Monster Archon quest. We met back up with Venti and friends and traveled to Storm Terror's lair. We quickly destroyed the three barriers and started a final boss fight in Monster. First, we had to massage the Valens back with animal pellets. After that, we had to fight the Valen alongside Venti, but the fight was pretty easy since we already knew what to do, so we quickly defeated the Valen. After we won, we went back to the church to return the Holy Liar to Barbara, and we got ambushed by Signora right outside the church. Venti got his gnosis stolen by her and we completed the Archon quest, but one day we'll get revenge on Signora. In order to get to AR20, we quickly completed Xiangling's introduction quest and Diluc's story quest as well. In addition, we did Razor's quest to unlock the Wolf of the North weekly boss as well, so we could start challenging that boss every week. After finishing most of the important monster quests and also collecting all the animal oculi, we made our way to Liyue and did a few world quests first for some primo gems before heading towards Liyue Harbor. Uh, kind of. Anyways, we started a Liyue Archon quest after that and met Child. He sent us to look for all the Liyue Adepti. We met a giant moose deer, angry birds, and animal boy. After that, we continued the Archon quest and had to confront a ghost. No, I'm out. We also got to AR25 as well, so we found a bit of leyline to level up our characters. On day 15, we completed the first Ascension Domain and raised our world level to 2. After that, we continued on our Liyue Archon quest. We met Zhongli for the first time and went around fetching for materials. We also met Ganyu and were tasked to go to the J Chamber to meet Ningguang. We started the next part of the quest and investigated the Fatuis. This backfired immediately as I got stuck in a dialogue while watching myself getting gunned down by the enemies. I'm hearing gunshots, did I get? Am I getting shot at? No, I'm still alive. Oh. Ow. Oh, look. We quickly got to confront Child and defeated him pretty easily. We also saved Liyue from flooding by sacrificing the Jade Chamber. After that, we met Signora again in a Fatui Northland bank, so to get revenge from the Mondstadt incident, we robbed the bank. And at the end of the third week, we completed the US Archon Quest. So on day 22, we started the Spiral Abyss. The early floors were pretty easy, so we completed the first three floors to get 900 Primo Gems total from them. I continued exploring Liyue and collected some more Geo Oculi. We also went through the Dragon Spine Quest, but my Kaya got stuck in this weird pose, which I had no idea how this happened. 
Anyways, I froze to death by sheer cold, and went through a few road bumps in order to complete the quest. The three Cryo Abyss Mages gave us some challenges, but we managed to pull through. After reaching the summit, we thought out more shards and completed a Dragon Spine questline. Back during 3.0, there were a few events that took place in Sumeru, so I explored a bit later in order to complete some limited time events for Primo Gems. After that, we went back to Dragon Spine and did a world quest that got me to AR35. I immediately did an Ascension quest and quickly completed the domain, and raised our world level and got 100 Primo Gems. So a month into the account, we collected around 11,000 Primo Gems. During this time, I held a poll in my video asking whether or not I should wish on a beginner's banner. And a lot of people voted yes, so I did a 10 poll just so I can get Noel. Well, things didn't exactly turn out the way I wanted because I got a 5 star character as well with that 10 poll. But yeah, here goes. Come on! Why, Genshin? Why not keep me company for a while? There'll be plenty of time. Well, whoever that is, I'm not gonna use you. I'm sorry. Okay, we got a Noel, that's good. Oh, I actually want Jean. This Jean, you <laughs> sorry, Finny. <laughs> Anyways, we also collected all the Geo Oculi, so we leveled up our Geo statue to level 10, and did the 9 pillar world quest. We struggled a bit before we unlocked the ruins, but inside the ruins, we quickly defeated some enemies and found some treasures including a bunch of chests. At the time of the video, version 3.0 was almost over, so I had to complete a bit of the Aranara quest to complete the photo taking part of the 3.0 event. Next, we went to Chasm and completed a world quest and unlocked the underground part, but we'll come back to the underground chasm in the future. Next, we started a Dane's Loaf quest in order to unlock Inazuma. We traveled together with Dane's Left and uncovered a lot of secrets about our siblings in the Abyss Order, but he ditched us for our sibling at the end of a quest. Oh well, we get to see Kazuha now, so I don't care about you anymore, things left. Anyways, to get to Inazuma, we had to do a prologue quest involving Beidou and Kazuha. The quest was actually pretty fast, and we completed it without any trouble. After that, we set sail on Beidou's ship and got to Inazuma. The Inazuma Archon quest was pretty fast-paced. First, we met Toma, and then we stalked some random Inazuma dude, and later escorted a balloon across the beach. We reached the Kamisato estate and Ayaka assigned a few quests for us to do. During the quest, we went to the Narukami shrine and met Yae Miko. After that, we met Yoimiya and helped someone escape Inazuma. We also helped out Ayaka and went on a date with her. Later on, we got to enjoy a very beautiful cutscene and she danced for us. Anyways, we continued on the Archon quest and found out Toma was getting his vision taken away in the Vision Hunt Decree. Luckily, we got there in time to stop Raiden Shogun, but we were forced into a boss fight. We miraculously survived the fight and escaped together with Toma. Later, we went on to find a resistance army and met their general Goro. Immediately afterwards, we were under attack by the Shogun army, but Kokomi showed up to save the day. We also infiltrated a Fatui hideout, but we quickly got knocked out. Luckily, Yae came to rescue us, and we underwent some training for the inevitable Raiden Shogun boss fight. Later on, we went to expose some corruption alongside Kujo Sara, and we made it to Tenshukaku to confront the Raiden Shogun. However, before that, we had to get our revenge on Signora, so we started a boss fight. The first phase was pretty easy, but the Crimson Witch phase was hard. It took us a few revives and a lot of suffering before we successfully got our revengeful venti. Before we had time to breathe, we also confronted the Raiden Shogun and started another boss fight. The fight was similar to the training and the earlier fight we had. We just had to survive a bit until Yae Miko arrived and gave us the shonen protagonist power up we needed to defeat Raiden Shogun. After the fight, we saved Inazuma while also completing the Inazuma Archon Quest. So after we finished the Archon quest, we went to Serra Island and completed the world quests there. We had to remove 4 seals and remove the Electro Storm. At the end of the quest, we had to defeat the Electro Oceanid in order to complete the quest. We got to 14,000 Primo Gems, so that's like the amount equal to a guaranteed 5 star character. So on days 36 to 56, Genshin's version 3.1 arrived. So throughout the week, we completed the main version event for this patch. 
We were introduced to a new monster character Mika and also completed some mini games for Primo Gems. I also started a Tsurumi Island World Quest where I had to help Ru out over a series of quests on the island. So throughout the next two weeks, I basically juggled between the 3.1 events and also the Tsurumi Island quests. Meanwhile, I also reached AR45 where I completed the next Ascension Domain. By this time, I also reached 100,000 subscribers as well and lost the bet that I made where I had to wear 100,000 Primo Gems on my main account since I failed to complete this Road to 100k challenge on this free to play account, which is to obtain 100,000 free to play Primo Gems before I reach 100k subscribers. Well, long story short, I pulled on a 3.1 banner with a 100k that I willed and managed to get C6 Sino. I also created a new challenge as well, saying that if I don't reach 100k Primo Gems on this free to play account, by the time I get to 150k subscribers, I will have to will another 100k Primo Gems on another account. This time, I'm kind of confident that I won't lose this bet, but who knows, right? Throughout the next two weeks, we just completed the dailies every day and did some story quests. Most notably, both Zhongli's and Raiden Shogun's. After we completed both of their story quests, we also unlocked the respective weekly boss domains for them. We also started a Sakura Cleansing Ritual World Quest by helping Hanachiru Sato. We destroyed a few barriers and sealed off the shrines and had a final showdown with a tumor. The boss fight was pretty challenging as you had to fight a tumor and Kairagi enemies, but we were able to pull through at the end. In our 10th week, we mainly completed the Inazuma world quests and story quests. First, we started off with Kazuha's story quest, which after completion, we got a free 4-star sword at the end that was smithed by Kazuha himself. We also did a Tatarazuna world quest as well and got through the first part of it. First, we had to use a cannon to destroy the barriers before we could enter the Mikage furnace area, which completed us the world quest. The next story quest we completed was a farmer's treasure, where we get to unlock the Amenoma Kageuchi weapon to craft for free. We basically rescued a person from the samurai enemies and later found the treasures for ourselves. I also returned back to Liyue and completed Senhur's quest and rebuilt the Jade Chamber and saved Liyue once again from the giant Hydra enemies. We also finished Genshin's version 3.1 by completing both Kokomi's and Ito's story quest as well. And so far, we collected around 26,000 Primo Gems. So on our third month of this account, Genshin's version 3.2 came out and like a free to play player, we had to complete all of the version's limited time events in order to get all the Primo Gems. The Adventurer's Trial was a co-op focused event, so I recruited some people from my Twitch stream to help me complete it. The event was pretty fun with friends, so it was a win-win situation since we got the Primo Gems for completing them, and also we get to have fun. There was also this fungi event where we tame our own fungi and use them to fight. It was pretty interesting and fresh since I could just stay back and watch the fungi blast the enemies to death. The event also gave us a free 4 star character Dory, so I'm pretty happy that I got her since she'll be a pretty important asset to our team when we tackle the Spiral Abyss in the future. There was also another Inazuma world quest that I haven't finished yet which was the Orobashi's Legacy Questline. The Questline rewards a decent chunk of Primo Gems and also gives out a bunch of Adventure EXP, so it was pretty important to complete it. The puzzles got really confusing, so I had to call for backup with the people from my Twitch stream. Even though we didn't clear it seamlessly with co-op, they made my life easier, so I'm grateful for that. With 100 days under my belt, I believe that this was an eye-opening experience. Speaking from someone that is not a free-to-play player, using only standard characters that Genshin gave us was both challenging and fun at the same time, since I get to use characters that I don't play with often. Originally, I started this series and planned to stop after I reached 100k subscribers, but since a lot of people enjoyed it, I decided to continue on until I really hit my end goal of 100,000 Primo Gems. With 3.2 ending, so far we collected around 28,765 Primo Gems. I admit, I haven't really played through all the world quests, and I haven't even started a Sumeru Archon quest yet, so there are still a lot of potential Primo Gems that I haven't gotten yet. Not to mention the Spiral Abyss Primo Gems you could get if you clear all the floors every week. I'll still have to raise my characters in order to even attempt to challenge the deeper floor of the Abyss. And since I can't wish, with my limited roster, this will be even more challenging. But since I created yet another new account for an upcoming new series, I'll probably take it slow and reach the goal eventually. But my dream for this account is getting a C6 5-star character, so I will not wish on any banners until then. So if you want to join me alongside this journey and watch more videos like these, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. And if you haven't watched this series at all, go check it out by clicking on the playlist here.